We're being really efficient with what we're doing in the gym, bringing lots of intensity where we need to bring it in order to see growth and gains in the muscle tissue. But we're also hammering you know, strength balance, things to bulletproof your joints, things to, to improve your mind-muscle connections and improve the quality of your movement. Then pump 40 is exactly what that is. Hey everybody, I am just doing what is known as the reclining hero pose. Do I not look like a reclining hero? Because oh, I thought this would look cool on camera. <laughs> so the beginning, the first half of the week I went squat, pull up day. So upper lower combo day. And then Tuesday I went hinging and pushing. So deadlifts and some presses. Then Wednesday was my kind of rest day. Uh, I mean, I mountain bike, so that wasn't exactly a rest, but I'd take, take a day out of the gym. Thursday, I did pretty much all lower body. And then today was like pretty much all upper body. Uh, did a lot of pushing, pulling, did a lot of shoulder stuff. I touched a couple machines that I have here at the gym that I didn't bother doing at home uh, yesterday and the rest of the week, because I haven't been in the gym training. Um, hamstring curl, which I think is great. I did Nordic hamstring curls earlier in the week, and then I like to do the machine, the hamstring curl machine later in the week, so that combination. So I always save a couple things for here at the gym because you know we got sweet equipment and access to great stuff. So got things started today with a little sledding, and I I've talked about this so many times, but here's the repeat. If you're going to come to the gym and you want to get something in efficiently, or if you have a proper training session and you really want to get the most out of it, you have to prepare. You can't just walk in the gym and be ready to engage your nervous system quickly. You have to build up to it. That's why preparation is key, and it doesn't have to be complicated. Here's the recipe. Three to five minutes on a cardio machine or pushing and pulling the sled. Simple, just get on that. I find the sled great because it works some local muscle fatigue in the quads, helps strengthen my knees, gets my ankles and my feet working, and it builds up a little cardio, blood, blood flow, all that. So I did three minutes of sled, and then it's about picking a few movements that work joint stability and range of motion, plus get a little bit of you know, pump into the muscles that you're gonna use. So a lot of upper body today, a lot of shoulders. So my prep, was actually quite simple. I hung from the rings, sort of uh, in a prone position with them behind me to stretch out, again, that long head of the bicep, get my chest to open up. I did scat push-ups and I did scat pull-ups. You'll also see me doing a couple little band activation drills. That's a little extra work that I'm doing that I wouldn't typically do just because I had this little shoulder you know, ache that's going on, but that was it. And after about eight minutes, I was done. 10 minutes, I was done. So. I moved right into my intensity superset. And I prescribed it or I wrote it specifically to build my warm up into the actual workout. It's 20 sets, 10 sets of each exercise, 10 sets of behind the neck press, 10 sets of a regressed single arm chin up on the rings. So on the even minutes, excuse me, the odd minutes, so minute number one, three, five, seven, and so forth, you do eight behind the neck presses. On the even minutes, you do three single arm or regressed single arm chin-ups per arm. So that's six total pull-ups. You find what pull-up variation makes it hardest for you. The option that I chose was one hand was fully gripped on the ring and then the other hand was using only two fingertips. Uh, so then I could pull with both arms, but the bias was on one arm at a time. And if I wanted to make that harder, I would go to one finger. If I want to make it easier, I would go to maybe three or four fingers or even the full grip. But I always am supinating or turning the one ring towards my chin or my chest. That's the arm that's getting the uh, advanced uh, intensity or work. So back and forth, back and forth. Now, the pull-up was hard to begin with. So I did my first couple sets probably off camera where I was just doing two arm uh, pull-ups and then as I got to like my third, fourth, and fifth set, I started to work in the single arm stuff. 
On the behind the neck press, I started with just the empty bar. I did once my first set there. My second set, I added tens. My next set, I added fives. Then I added fives. And by the fourth or fifth set, I was at my like working weight where I was grimacing on those last two reps, where I only had probably two more reps in the tank if I went to failure. And that's what we're after. 20 sets and the first five on each exercise were more or less getting my body prepped and primed, wasting no time, but still getting in some good quality movement, some lower intensity volume. So like five out of 10, six out of 10 effort. And then the last five sets on each were hard, eight out of 10, maybe even the last one, nine out of 10 effort. And that is what actually those last three to four sets are where you get the vast majority of your muscle gains and growth. Now, the stuff that came before it was not a waste of time. And somebody might argue like, well, why don't you just warm up and start at your eight or nine out of 10 effort scale? Because we want to program really good mind muscle connections. And those earlier sets, when you're on a clock and you're actually working in this added volume of repetitions with quality, with control at lower effort, you're building good mind muscle connections. You're taking care of ranges of motion that maybe you stop having access to when you start pushing towards your threshold. So I love that format. I did 20 sets, so 20 minute EMOM. You could do that in 16 minutes. Once you feel like you've hit three to five sets that are at high intensity on each exercise, you're done. So the first few should be warm up and then you're right into it. And after that, I moved on to some, uh, we'll call them supplemental uh, accessory lifts. This was when I was doing 45 degree hip extensions um, with a dumbbell right in front of my chest. I did 12 reps there. This was to work actually my low back and my glutes. Mostly my low back, my glutes are pretty smoked from the week already, but definitely gets both. I like this for low back training. And then I paired that with a cable throat pull or a could be a banded throat pull if you don't have a cable machine, but that's basically just, you're pulling towards your throat and with the elbows going wide in order to hit that position, it was hitting tons of the back of the shoulders. So it was like rear delts, um, some traps getting involved there. Just a great addition and complement to that behind the neck press. Really, really hitting a lot of the back of the shoulder today. You know, if I wanted to get more anterior shoulder stuff, I would be pressing more in the front of my body, uh, maybe a, a military press or a high incline press, but I'm working on opening up more Back to what I was saying earlier, just a little shoulder discomfort. I find that when I've gotten out of this position too much and I'm starting to get into this position too much, I start to have issues with that bicep tendon. So this is just helping me feel balanced. And, and uh, that's why I call it strength balance supersets. And so that's typically where my session would end. That's a pump 40 session, prep, intensity superset, strength balance superset. But then as I mentioned, I wanted to get a little bit extra work in because I was here at the gym. So I threw in the hamstring curls. I threw in the trap three raises. Those were just things again to like check some boxes on bulletproofing my shoulders and doing my hamstring work on the machine here, which I don't have at home. So all in all, you know, I got, I actually got all my lifting done in 40 minutes, add in 10 minutes of prep, 50 minutes. You know, that was a, it was a terrific session. I had some extra time to sit here, you know, stretch out my quads, stretch out my shoulders. So an hour's worth of training and there were tons and tons of repetitions that we got in. So I'm really happy with how that workout turned out. And um, hey, if you wanna go check out that specific style of training, specific type, type of lifting, where we're being really efficient with what we're doing in the gym, bringing lots of intensity where we need to bring it in order to see growth and gains in the muscle tissue. But we're also hammering, you know, strength balance, things to bulletproof your joints, things to, to improve your mind muscle connections and improve the quality of your movement. Then pump 40 is exactly what that is. Uh, so you check the link in the description down below. That's the ebook that we just released last week and you can check it out. 
uh, grab your copy, go hit these workouts yourself, see about including them on top of the training that you're already doing in place of the training that you're doing, or if you're a functional bodybuilder, uh, persist member already, you can start mixing those things in for yourself within whatever program track that you're following. I love it. It keeps me efficient, allows me to get out, enjoy life, do a lot more stuff outside of the, uh, this summer uh, out of the gym. So I highly encourage you going and grab it. If you have any questions about the training session, drop them in the comments below. I love you all. I wanna hear what you would like to see in the next training session that I'm bringing from the Functional Bodybuilding Headquarters. What movements do you wanna see? Maybe you wanna see me do something completely different. I would love to give it a whirl. So drop those comments and of course a like if you like this video. Talk to you next time.